There we go. Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. And we are B-Pow. You're watching B-Pow Picks, of course. This is uh, Bork, and I am Pow, Pearls of Wisdom. We put that together, and we get B-Pow, because we're clever like that. Well, well we had uh, one heck of a day yesterday with our picks. We only had two incorrect ball picks, I believe, but they were very incorrect. <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it good, right? What was it? Marlins lost 25 to 9. <laughs> and uh, I see the other one wasn't too bad. I think the Jays lost uh, 7 to 2, was it? 7 to 2. Yeah, it was still pretty bad. <laughs> but after the Marlins game, it didn't seem that bad. <laughs> that was, no. That was unreal. Who saw that coming, though? Really? No, I mean, like, that's what I was saying. I mean, you have a guy in Tommy Malone who really obviously didn't pitch well either because the, they scored nine and still lost. Like, the one announcer made the joke, whoever scores nine and loses by 20. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That was a pretty crazy game. Uh, I think it was, wasn't it 10-1 after the second? Uh and it just kept on getting like snowballing. They kept on getting solo home run home runs, and you're yeah. like, "Is this ever going to be over?" <laughs> oh my god! Oh uh, yeah, it was not fun to watch. And the worst part is the thing about it was the early game, so it's like not the best uh, energy going into the rest of your picks. You're like, "Oh no, yeah. don't tell me it's going to be one of those days." But it wasn't. We did pretty good actually. We got the we got that nail biter of a Raptors game. And uh, my tennis picks, I believe, all, oh, no, no, I had Serena Williams minus one and a half sets, and she did lose a set. Well, but Grant, that, that Raptors game, that Raptors game, if Pascal Siakam could have made one of his layups, or Fred yeah, Van what was his made, field percentage? <laughs> like, or Fred Van Fleet made, he did great on defense, but he missed yeah. about 10 clutch shots that yeah. could have won the game in regulation. <laughs> so, I mean. And that's uh, not normal for Fred Van Fleet, no. actually. It's a good He's thing using pretty clutch. He figured out uh, uh, how to play, well, one fifty three minutes that he didn't even know he did at the end of the game. The reporter's like, yeah, you play 53 minutes. And he's like, <laughs> he didn't even know he played 53 minutes. Yeah. But anyways, overall, it was actually ended up being a really good day again. We were up units like usual. Um, got more tennis plays today. Go over to our Patreon. We're not going to give you what those are because I've been 11. I've had two incorrect in 12 picks. So that's uh, uh, for U.S. Open tennis picks. So people are making tons of money over there. Highly recommend it. I'll put them down in the comment section. Check it out. But let's get into some games for today. Um, we're going to start off with uh, some ball. Uh, we'll go... Uh, Dodgers, Diamondbacks. What do we got on that game? Yeah, well, the Dodgers and Diamondbacks, you put the over in, which really has nothing to do with Dustin May. Um, it has to do with the fact that Madison Bumgarner has an injured back and has an over 80 or a, and he's coming back from an injured back. So that doesn't really go together. Um, so I think against a team in the Dodgers that feast off of lefties, too, they really feast off of everybody. But, I mean, left-handers, you got Mookie Betts. You got Justin. If Justin Turner's back, you got Justin Turner. Um, even then, you got Kike Hernandez, who started his career as a lefty specialist in terms of a hitter and then became a good all-around hitter. So they just have a lot of guys in their team. Max Muncy hits lefties well as a lefty. So like, they have a lot of guys in the team. Obviously, Bellinger does the same that just hit lefties as lefties as well. And then the guys that are right-handed destroy lefties. So I don't think that's going to uh, spell well for Bumgarner. Like Bumgarner will probably go up at least six himself. And then the, uh, not the Astros, the Diamondbacks bullpen is pretty abysmal. So because they traded a, a Chafin, obviously, who was one of their better guys. And then May usually gives up like two, but pitches really well. So you figure... Um, you're already at eight there, and then you need to just bullpen to give up, which is likely. Usually bullpens on one one team's bullpen gives up one or two runs per game. So, Especially yeah. when you're playing a terrible team, when it's a terrible team against a good team. 
show. Yeah, you could all. I think you could also just add a little juice on the ML too. Probably Dodgers are going to win this game, especially after a long game yesterday. The D-backs used quite a bit of their better uh, bullpen yesterday already, and they couldn't beat the Dodgers. So what are they going to do today? Really, they don't have much. Uh, I agree with you. That's uh, it's looking like a blowout for sure. Uh, be very surprised if it's anywhere near close. Uh, so Houston over LA. Oh no, sorry. That's we'll get to that when we're doing basketball. <laughs> Indians <laughs> over Royals. RL. Uh, Indians over Royals. We have. Uh, what do we have on that play? Indians over Royals. We had the ML and the RL because, like I said, I'm very confident in that one, and I put the joke on our pitch on. But who the hell knows in 2020? <laughs> but. Yeah. The Indians uh, definitely should be the team. Uh, Savale uh, pitches pretty well. Brady uh, Singer has struggled in his young uh, career so far, which doesn't mean anything for Royals fans. It just means he's struggling in a 60-game season. So, But I, I don't think that's going to – it seems like he needs to get his confidence going and have something to click that in. And I don't really see that happening against the Indians who have been cruising lately. So – that's not the team you want to try to get your confidence going against. So I believe Savall is going to pitch really well in that game. And then uh, Singer's going to struggle a little bit. So they should definitely win over the run line because they'll probably win by like three or four runs. And then so Mm -hmm. uh, they definitely should get that. And then the Indians are definitely going to win the game in my eyes because I, the pitching matchup, especially if you go off of how Savall has pitched since last year, and not just this calendar year heavily favors um, the Indians. But even going off of this calendar year, he still has a 1-1-3 whip with a 3.63, so he's still pitching pretty solid. Yeah. Um, Singer, like a lot of young pitchers, it's it's just learning to pitch in the big leagues. Yeah. I mean, you've, uh, most, most pitchers have relied on their stuff up until now and come up to the big leagues and realize that it's not just the – it's not just your, uh, you know, two pitches that dominate anymore. You got to really be able to change it up, and that's what Singer's learning, and I'm sure he will. But probably not happening today. Um, so, Giants Padres, what do we got on that? Uh, well, the Giants and uh, Padres again. They're the Giants have been doing. Surprising things, obviously. Um, but uh, I mean, that one did we? What one did we do for that? Because I didn't write that down. I didn't even. Oh, you it. didn't write it down? Oh, okay. We got over eight and a half. Okay, because yeah, I didn't even. Yeah, that one's my, not even. My uh, my app is nine. Yours is eight and a half. Okay, yeah, because that one's not even inputted. Um, so. Yeah, that one can definitely go over because Trevor Cahill has been pitching good this year, but he's prone against good hitting teams in his career to leave a sinker over the plate at times and then get hurt that way. And then Chris Paddock's having a bit of a sophomore slump. Uh, He came in last year and was throwing it by everybody, had filthy stuff. Now he has to kind of figure out how to actually adjust to everyone adjusting to him. So uh, against, again, similar to the last thing, against the – Giants that are really cruising right now, it's probably not the best team to have to adjust against right now when they're one of the hottest teams in the league. No. So, uh, actually, it's not the the best timing for him. So, I believe uh, Cahill, like he tends to do against some good teams, uh, leaves his sinker up a little bit. We'll do that and give up a few runs. And then Paddock uh, against the cruising Giants because he tends to rely on his breaking ball and fastball a lot if his breaking ball is not going which has been one of his achilles heel this year he tends to try to get the fastball by people if you do that with the giants they have dead red fastball guys that kill fastball so they're just going to feast off of you probably yeah um that's an interesting play i also just um really like the energy of the giants and, and the way they're rolling right now Lots of confidence, especially in their hitting. They're having a lot of high-scoring games. And the Padres have actually had quite a a few uh, high-scoring games a lot recently as well. So certainly looks like the trend in that game for sure, like the pick. Uh, Okay, we got Orioles-Yankees. What are we looking on that game? Um, Well, 
I mean, I think we pretty much know with the Orioles and um, Yankees. I mean, I think that game has a chance to be an under because Keegan Aiken, since he's got caught up, has been really good. And then Garrett Cole, I mean, he hasn't pitched like Garrett Cole this year, but he still pitched pretty good. Aiken in his first four starts of his career has uh, been, or first two starts of his career, pitched out of the bullpen, and the other, has been very good in 13 innings. He has right above a two ERA with 15 strikeouts in 13 innings, so two more strikeouts than in his innings, and then only gives up about a hit per inning. So uh, he has a good chance, especially against other than yesterday, um, a Yankees team. We also have to remember, Baltimore sometimes just beats the Yankees. Like, the Orioles just one of those teams that just sometimes just knows how to play the Yankees for whatever reason. And Cole has a higher ERA because for some reason he's given up more home runs if he has a game he doesn't do that, he also usually only gives up about a hit per inning. Because, like, his issue is his hit will be a 500-foot bomb <laughs> this year that someone destroys. And I think against Baltimore, he has a lesser chance of that happening, unless if it's Nunez or a couple other guys, because they have more guys that want to kill you with doubles and just good pieces of hitting rather than we're going to slam this thing 500 feet. So... They have yeah. a couple of guys like that, but they're right-handed. So I think Cole will be good against them. For the pitching matchup, it does seem likely that it would be under nine. Um, if I'm going to take a play here, it might not be a bad idea. I wouldn't put it out to Patreons. I, I agree with you. Uh, for the juice, putting a little bit on the Orioles here probably wouldn't be a bad idea uh, because of their history. But I'm not putting it down as a play because – the Yankees do seem to be coming around a little bit now. Uh, they had a good game against Toronto. Their confidence looked. They didn't. They look like a different team against Toronto than I've seen th- so far this year. They didn't look as frustrated. They looked a little more relaxed. And, uh, so I wouldn't want to bank on that. But putting a little juice on it probably wouldn't hurt. Anyways, I'm not giving that out as a pick to patrons or anything like that. That's just a lean. If you want to look at it, that go go with it. Go with it. Cubs Reds. Final ball get ball pick. What are we doing with that? Yeah, the Cubs and uh, Reds. I believe the Cubs because Alonze uh, has been pitching very well. Even though Sonny Gray has, he's just been pitching great since his call up. Uh, and obviously, when you first get caught up, you tend to just keep having the adrenaline kicking and going until you have that game that you kind of get put in check. And I don't think that will be against Cincinnati because, as we both know, Cincinnati has been a very disappointing team uh, this season and should be 50 times better than they are. So uh, I think that's going to continue to happen and they're going to continue to not be able to handle the Cubs and they'll win that game, the Cubs. I think Reds have been poorly managed this year, actually. And uh, uh, the Cubs have been fairly consistent have looked uh like they're a team that's on full determination mode and uh not, not too bad for confidence uh sometimes that can make up for a lot of shortcomings and that seems to be happening with the cubs uh yeah i like that's a pretty good play okay we'll go to basketball real quick and then we're gonna do some we'll do the hockey pick for today so houston this is huge houston and la what do you got for that big guy I think it'll be Houston because I don't think Houston's going to go with just one game. I don't think they have a chance to win the series, but I don't think they're just make it be a one game four to one thing. I don't, I think Houston has too much offensive fight for that. And the Lakers have been inconsistent offensively since coming back at times. So if the Lakers have an inconsistent offensive game, Houston's going to beat them. Now, granted, they do have LeBron James, but even so, Houston has James Harden, and we know James Harden can get hot as a firecracker, which he hasn't been the issue. The issue has been Russell Westbrook can't figure out how to not turn over the ball. So if he actually has a game, which I believe tonight, uh, for some reason, since at times you've seen flashes in each game, but he still looks off. So I feel like since you've seen the flashes of Russell, He's going to kind of put it together when he knows this is the game that can tie it up because that's extra. Because especially for a player like him, he's a very high energy guy. He's going to go, we need to even the series and we need to make like. So I think he's one of those guys. He's a guy that can be a little bit um, 
off-putting to some players, but he's still a leader of a team. And I think he's going to rally everyone with Harden tonight, and they're going to be able to win this game. Now the series, I don't think they'll win. I think this will be similar to what I said with the Raptors, where they win the game, and then it might be the last game they win. <laughs> uh, so uh, I think I think they'll win this game. It'll be 2-2, and then the Lakers will probably change their game plan for whatever the Rockets did tonight and just smoke them in the next two games. But I do like the Rockets in this game. I just really think that Russell Westbrook's going to have his best game and put it together. Harden's been perfectly okay, so he just needs to kind of keep doing his thing. Um, it's an interesting play for sure. Uh, but I also think that we, although Harding has played well, he hasn't really had that game where he just hits, you know, when Harding just hits everything, like just yeah. not from everywhere. And it feels like this could be that game right now where you're reaching in deep, knowing that you can't go down three, one against the Lakers or you're pretty much, you are definitely done. So he, this seems like the game where he'll throw everything at it, nothing to lose. And Harding will just hit from everywhere. He does that. When he does that, it's almost impossible to beat them. He, does, he can't, doesn't seem to be able to do it overly, you know, all the time in the playoffs like that. But there's usually one or two games where he's like that, and we haven't really seen it yet, and this could definitely be it. It'd be a good play. Lots of juice on that game. So uh, uh, definitely one to I, – I think that's a at least a good risk anyways. If you're going to make a risky play for some good juice, this that would definitely be a good one. So we'll go now to uh, Vegas versus Dallas. I personally uh, – I personally think that uh, from what we saw from Dallas last uh, game, this could be a little bit of a struggle now for Dallas. What do you like on the Vegas-Dallas game? Um, yeah, Dallas, I mean, they were surprising in the first game, but they also only scored one goal, and then Anton Kadobin just played very well. Um, so I believe the Golden Knights are going to continue. They had a 3 nothing shutout which was Leonard's fourth shutout of the postseason. Uh, so um, he's doing really well, and I think that's going to continue tonight. And like you said, Vegas is going to be able to handle, because even if Dallas does do very good offensively, Leonard's been money this postseason. So they still got to get a few pucks and not just one most, to beat Vegas other than in the first game. But now that they were able to kind of get their offense going and they have more chances than three goals. They had a couple shots that Hudobin made decent saves and then even Ottinger in his debut uh, made some pretty solid saves in that third that they could have had it 4 nothing. They could have had it 5 nothing uh, with a couple of their shots. They just didn't. So I believe Vegas is going to be able to pretty ha- – pretty handily win this game even if it's a close game and score I don't think it'll be a close game in the numbers that like you look at the after game numbers like possession time shots and all that good stuff I don't think it would be as close in those numbers even if it is like a three to two score because we know these playoffs these playoffs there's been three to two scores where a team has 14 shots the other team has 44 shots so uh that's that's how I see uh this game guy i think vegas is just going to come out and go pressure 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 and then try to just completely like colorado did the one game smoke them in the first and then they're kind of just be out of it yeah i i i'm leaning to the fact that vegas doesn't drop one from here on out against uh dallas um i'm with you on the fact that dallas pretty much played the best game they could play against vegas and only won one nothing uh, and uh, in Vegas didn't look horrible in that game, really. He, they still had a lot of pushback, still had a lot of possession times. Uh, so, and I, I think Dallas is more tired than Vegas as well. Um, so I'm going to go with Vegas here. I'm going to say, I'm going to go as far as to say, and I know like you, you, uh, I, I wouldn't even be opposed to PL here. Um, I, I have a feeling that the last game really shocked Dallas to understanding just how good this Vegas team is. And as long as the Vegas... What is the PL one? What PL is it? win by two. What's the... What are you getting on it? Probably yeah. about 175 or 180. 175. Maybe in reg might be a better... Just to add a little juice. In reg. I think it, there hasn't been too many... They haven't, neither one of these teams have been... Or Vegas hasn't been going to overtime too often. And 
I just I really think they're game dogs. And I don't think they will against Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. So probably in reg would be a good good play there. But uh yeah, well that's our full forty two percent. You gotta go off and head out to your family, do your family stuff. But uh, I hope you enjoyed all this, patrons. Uh, I'm glad you're we're making we're making good money out there. Become a patron today. Go over to the Patreon, uh, check out BPAL Picks. We are having tons of fun. You get to join us on our lives in the evenings that I've that we've been doing. That's been fun as heck. And of course, you can find all of our information because Bork doesn't just do this. No, he's also a writer and a fantastic one at that. Over at uh, www.steelflyers.com. Be excited for how what that the website's going to look like in the in the near future. From what I understand, it's going to be amazing. You're going to be able to find everything you want about sports there with some of the greatest writers and podcasters all in one place. It's going to be awesome. That's our full 42. For Bork, I'm Pearls of Wisdom. We are BPAL. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.